desire. So we start with this. I I need to pray. I'm supposed to pray. I know I got to pray. It'd be a good idea to pray. Prayer's a good idea. This is a go ahead. I don't like that thing. <laughs> Prayer's a good idea. Um, so so how do you move from this place where you have you know you know you're supposed to or you ought to or you should, but you really don't want to. So you have you have to start. So what moves us? What's going on? It's like there's a split, isn't there? In your head, you know you're supposed to, but your heart's not in it. Or there's something blocking your heart from wanting. It could be a bunch of hurts and disappointments. You know, I really tried going with God. I really tried doing this, and this is what happened, and this is what happened, and this is what happened, and then we get cynical. It could be, it could be private sin. I don't want to face God. I don't feel good enough or clean enough or this enough or that enough. Could be some very some real hurts that you have. Relationships that haven't really been worked through. And you just kind of have this feel like giving up thing. Today is the cynicism that I think that is in a lot of Christians. We've looked at this passage and one thing that a child is not, a little child is not cynical. It was the time that the disciples came to Jesus with the question, who's really greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to side and set it on his feet in the middle of them all. Believe me, he said, unless you change your whole outlook like little children. He will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's the man who can be as humble as this little child who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We've talked about it. To come to God as a little child. Trusting. Dependent. Open. Honest. Filled with wonder. Questions. No masks. Complete honesty. I'm mad at you, God. Maybe that's why some of us can't really connect. I'm mad at you, God. Just getting plain honest. Why Jesus needed to pray? Why did Jesus need to pray? Did Jesus need to pray? Why? Why? Excuse me? To hear God. To hear what you want to hear is help. Okay. Does that motivate you? Does that, does that motivate all of us here? I just want to hear from God. Maybe, sometimes. But it's more than that. Well, he was made to be a person. He was made like us. He was made like us in every way, yet without sin. He was made like us in every way. That's what Hebrews says. Made like us in every way. What did he understand about himself that maybe we don't understand about ourselves? Now, how many brought their Bible? Or have a Bible. All right? John 5.19. I want to... I want to... Someone get up John 5.30. Someone look up... Who wants, who wants John 5.30? Because I want you to stand and... Okay, I want you to stand and read it then. Get ready for it. John 8.28. Who wants to read that one? Okay. Who wants to read John 12.49? And then Luke 5, 16. And then John 15, 5. Who's going to, who's going to read John 15? Okay. Okay. John 5, 19 is mine. 
Jesus said this, I tell you the truth, is if Jesus ever lied. Why does Jesus say, I tell you the truth? What's he, what's he saying here? Emphasis. He's, he's making a major statement. I want to really let you know. Hear what he said. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. I can do nothing by myself. What if you believe you could do nothing by yourself? If you actually believe that, you'd be on your knees all the time. You'd be praying to everybody, everything. If you actually believe that, that's our problem. We don't believe these things. Jesus said, I can do nothing. He was that desperate. I can do nothing by myself. Okay, someone, John 5.30. This is from the message. Uh, speak up. This is from the message. I can't do a solitary thing on my own. I listen, then I decide. I can trust my decision because I not have to get my own way. No way to carry out a Okay, he can't do nothing on his own. He's got to follow God. This is the way it is. Same deal. Okay, someone, uh, uh, John 8.28. I do nothing on my own. I only speak what God tells me to speak. He knew, he could, whenever I talk to people, I don't even know how to talk to people. What if we'd actually believe that? I, can, I, I can't talk to anybody about anything. Outside, I got to hear God on the simple conversations, on any conversation. I think all of us know there's some conversations we pray about. Most of them we don't. And then we blurt out whatever. Uh, John, thank you. Here, uh, John 12, 49. The things I taught were not from myself. The Father who sent me told me what to say and what to teach. Okay, the things that I taught were not of my own. Mm -hmm. I just got this from the Father. Woo! John 5, 16. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray in seclusion. Okay, Jesus often would slip away to the wilderness and pray. Yeah, if you believed all those other things, you'd be slipping away often too. We would be, oh my goodness, I can't face people. Martin Luther, Martin Luther not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther way back in Reformation time, he said on... The no, a normal day, he would spend an hour in prayer before he would go out and greet people and do things. But he says on especially busy days, I would get up early and spend two to three hours praying. God, we're not there. And then John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bearer forth much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. Okay, now Jesus. Just remember in King James. Okay, okay, and that, that's fine. I am the vine, Jesus says, you're the branches. This is the connection. This is the prayer connection. I'm the vine, you're the branches. And if you're disconnected, what happens? You can bear you you, 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 bear, you, bear fruit. you will not bear fruit. You're not nothing good is gonna come out of this because what's he say? Because apart from me, okay. Put your hand right here. God, you desire truth in the inmost place. Would you help me? To realize, apart from you, I can do nothing. God, apart from you. Now all of us know we can do things. 
We can't do anything of any value, of any value in this life if we're not connected to Him. We can't do any, anything of any eternal value. God, would you make this real to me? Let's say that together. God, would you make this real to me? That's why we need to pray. It's, it's worthless. What we do has zero value. Prayer was Jesus' life. Can you imagine having a conversation? You've heard me say this before. And, what, and, and, you, and you tell me all sorts of different things. Right? How are you doing? How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, we, how you doing? How you doing, Robin? How how are you, Eleanor? Tell me about you. Uh, you've heard me say these things. Now, if someone came up to Jesus and said, tell me how you are, what would Jesus say? The, the Father and I are great. No, 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 Jesus, just tell me about you. Don't tell me about the Father. He kind of look at you quizzically and said. I can't tell you that because whatever I do, whatever I say, whatever I think and really work out in my life is connected to fa my father. Jesus' identity was in his father. What is your identity in? That's the question. Who makes you you? Jesus was without question the most dependent human being who ever lived. That's why his life made so much difference. He was a little kid. I can't do nothing without my daddy. He was a, just a little kid all the time because he simply couldn't do life on his own. So he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. He couldn't do life on his own. He didn't know how to do life on his own. He absolutely knew he couldn't do life on his own. In order to really turn to Jesus, we have to get the revelation of who you are without him. Who are you without Jesus? God, show me my sin. God, show me my heart. God, show me. No branch. This is the John 15 passage. Thank you, everybody, for passages. No branch can bear fruit by itself. We cannot produce any value by ourselves. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I am you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Without that connection, we wither. That's reality. When Jesus tells us to simply trust God like a little child, he isn't asking us to work up some spiritual energy. He is telling us to realize that like him, we don't have the resources to do life. When we deeply get this, that we can't do life on our own, then prayer makes complete sense. Prayer makes complete sense. When we get this. What is so difficult about honestly accepting what Jesus is saying? Let's get another one.